okay and i'm also recording this video okay for those of you who cannot attend okay okay bismillahir rahmanir rahim so uh, first of all uh, we will talk about the conductivities of uh, substances first of all uh, the number one prerequisite you know prerequisite means uh, the required condition meaning what is required the first prerequisite for conductivity is to have um a mobile charged particles by mobile i mean being able to move okay being able to move and that they should be charged okay i'm sharing my screen i'm sharing my screen so keep your eyes on my screen okay okay so okay so uh, um the solids that are uh, that can conduct the only solids that can conduct electricity are metals okay whereas the liquids and and the solids uh, which can conduct electricity i told you were metals no other solid can conduct electricity it is only the metals that can conduct yeah okay and a uh, uh, whether solid or liquid if you are asked in a question whether a substance can conduct electricity or not you have to pay attention on two points remember these two uh, points should be in your mind while deciding if a substance can conduct or not whether irrespective of its uh, state irrespective of whether it is solid liquid or whatever you have to look at whether there are charged particles and if they are mobile now if they are mobile particles but they are not charged then you won't have conductivity or if you have charged particles and they are not mobile then you won't have conductivity basically you want both the uh, both the qualities both the characteristics together the particles should be mobile and that they should be charged now as far as solids are concerned metals are the only ones which fulfill these uh two prerequisites or which fulfill these two conditions they have mobile charged particles no other solid not that i know of i cannot think of any other solid and neither has your book uh, mentioned and neither did i find anywhere else uh which is a solid and can conduct electricity now we have ionic salts ionic salts but they do not conduct electricity in the solid state why we will discuss that later okay uh but let's talk about the metals first now look at the structure of metals what are metals made up of the, uh you guys have done um the metal structures right so can anybody have you can can anybody explain me the structure of metals okay let me get to you guys can anybody explain me the structure of metals uh page number we are on page number 103 103 okay so can anybody explain me the structure of metals yes ibrahim yes yes ibrahim i have unmuted you hello yes can you explain me this the inter metal the particles are uh, tightly packed okay what are those particles inter what do you mean by that i mean a particle there are many types of particles are they molecules atoms ions what are they there are we have different types of particles atoms okay and then they are tightly packed together the okay. intermolecular force is strong okay um that's it okay. uh no that's not it okay aisha nadeem yes yes aisha yes in metals the protons are the protons are tightly packed but the electrons they float around in a cloud 
um, the they're, cat, they're the cat they're ions are protected from the protons, and so they're able to carry charges easily. The the proton the cations are protons. Aisha, are are cations protons in the metals? Okay, uh, okay, Yustra, I'll give you a chance. Okay, you know why I'm asking you this because you have done this before. Okay. I cannot mute and unmute. Okay, I'm. Uh, this is taking time, so let me just jump on to the uh, explanation. Okay, now look at my screen. Okay, uh, I'm already sharing. Okay, look at the screen. This is what. This is how a metal looks like. Okay, these are cations, Aisha, not protons. Okay. Metals, the cations which are present within the metallic bond, or you know, this this whole thing is a metallic bond, by the way. Okay, uh, 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 why? Because they are all bonded together. They are all embedded in a sea of electrons. They are all the cations. They are not protons. They are cations. For example, if we are talking about sodium, let's let's suppose we are talking about sodium. Now. Sodium atom will lose an electron. Each sodium atom will lose an electron. Why? Why would it lose an electron? To have that stability, the stable octet. To have the stable outermost shell. Uh, to have a complete uh, number of eight in the outermost shell. In order to attain that stability, each atom will lose an electron and therefore turn into a cation, right? Now, sodium cation is not a proton. Only hydrogen cation is a proton. No other cation is a proton. Please remember that. Okay? So sodium, uh, if it loses an electron, will not turn into a proton. So these are sodium cations, for example, and they are embedded. Now, each atom has lost an electron. Each atom has lost an electron. So all of their electrons have together made a C. They have made a C of electrons. You can imagine this as uh, dry fruits in a cake, okay? So dry fruits are these cations and the cake is the sea of electrons. So these cations are embedded in a sea of electrons. Now, because of, this, um, because of these uh, opposite electrostatic charges, you know, the sea of electrons is negatively charged and these cations are positively charged. Therefore, uh, uh, this force of attraction, this um, the force of attraction due to opposite electrostatic attraction is what keeps the metals solid or what keeps the what gives metals its, its properties, you know, what makes it strong, having high density, tensile strength, and so on and so forth. And metals have so many other pro properties. So that is due to the attraction between these two opposite charges, okay? So this is metal, okay? Now, looking at this structure, now we know that these electrons are moving. They are constantly moving. These electrons are constantly moving. These electrons are the mobile charged particles which are responsible for the conductivity of metals. Okay, these are the mobile charged particles which are responsible for conducting electricity. Now, remember, these electrons not only vibrate, they actually flow like water okay they actually flow like water from one end of the metal to another i mean they are free to move they can go far away from their parent cation like they don't have to be bonded to one cation they don't have to be bonded to one cation they can just roam around you know it's like uh, you can think of it also you can also think of it as mothers a lot of mothers in a park who have come together for a picnic with their kids now, it's not important for the kids to stick to the mother. The mother lets the children play. And so the children play uh, in the whole park. They're playing, they're running from one end of the park to another, and the mothers are sitting and chit-chatting and, you know, together. So, and, and children are playing around them like that. You can think of it like that. So just like the children are free to move within the park, same, similarly, these electrons are also free to move within this metal. Okay, 
So these are the mobile charged particles which are responsible for the conductivity of metals. And by the way, metals are the only solids that do that because in other solids, either the particles are not charged or they are charged, but they are not mobile. So one problem or the other. So that, that is why the other solids cannot conduct electricity. Okay, now, uh, the, now because I, I just told you that you, you have to have charged particles, non-metals are covalent molecules, covalent molecules. Now I would like to ask you, but that would take time and I wanna cover as much as I can within this time limit that I have of one hour, but you know that restricts me from asking questions from you guys, but I want to. I want to know if you guys know what a covalent molecule is. Do you guys know what covalent molecules are? Yes, that this is so important that you have to understand this. If you don't understand this, Yusra, you want to answer? Uh, yes, yes, delocalized electrons. Delocalized, is diamond a metal or non-metal? Hosema, you will answer this question yourself. Uh, Hania, you want to? Uh, answer this question okay yusra because you you raised your hand i'm unmuting you yes yusra coulomb bond is formed between the non metals okay you what is the covalent okay what is a covalent bond it is the bond uh, formed between the non metals uh, what is the difference between covalent and ionic bond in the ionic bond the uh, metals giving an i an electron to the non-metal. So the metal is becoming positive charge and the non-metal is becoming negative charge. But, yeah. um, and over here in the covalent uh, bonding, they're sharing the electrons. So no one yeah. is gaining or losing an electron. Good job. Yes, yes. I want you guys to appreciate the fact that uh, in covalent, the two atoms are sharing electrons. They are sharing electrons. There is no positively charged or negatively charged ion. Basically, you get positive and negative charges only when one atom completely loses an electron and the other atom completely gains an electron. Whereas in covalent bond, there is nothing complete. They are sharing. They are sharing, you know? Like the atom is saying that you cannot take my whole electron. We will share, okay? I, I, I still have this electron, but I'm sharing with you like that. So we don't have any charged particles in covalent. Now, how will you decide if a, mole if a compound is ionic or covalent? That's my new question. If you want to answer this new question, then you will raise your hand, otherwise you lower your hand. How, by looking at the compound, by looking at the uh, formula of the compound, how will you decide if a substance is ionic or covalent? Arham? Okay. Yes, Arham? You can decide by telling if there are two, uh, there are two different types of elements. Example, if there's water, so in water, they're, they're covalently bonded. Example, hydrogen and oxygen, which forms to make water. Okay, so if the elements are different, then the bonding would be? Covalent. If they are different? Yes. And if they are same? No, uh, if they're same, I think ionic. Nah, Arham, you're confused. You're confused, Beta. Yeah, you know, this is the thing. Uh, when, uh, when, when you don't know basics, I cannot go on. I cannot go on. I have to, because you, if you do not know the basics, how will I go on? Okay, Aisha. Yes, you tell me how by looking at the formula of the compound do you decide if it is ionic or covalent? Yes? Ionic bonds are only made up of metals and non-metals, whereas covalent bonds are only made up of gas elements. Covalent are ma made of only? Gas elements, the gaseous ones, like chlorine or 
which exists as the atomic atoms oh i didn't understand you completely the last part i i couldn't get the, your last part okay let me ask amna yes amna yes amna yes amna uh, the 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 ones that have uh, one metal and one non metal they are ionic and the ones that have both non metals they are covalent okay okay so so how do you decide if 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 the if the elements are amna amna can i can i request can i request you that you and atika sit in separate rooms because i can see i can hear my own voice okay okay so um, um see yes you are right by by metal and non metal you have to decide which are metal and which are non metal how do you decide how do you decide if an element is metal or non metal am i sharing my screen with you it, wait i will tell you how you decide okay i am sharing my screen and i am sharing periodic table with you from google periodic table okay by by looking at the periodic table you know that the first uh, two groups the first two groups and the transition the first two groups and the transition sorry the first two groups and the transition metals they are metals okay remember this staircase of metalloids staircase of metalloids on the right hand side of that staircase are all non metals so can you see this uh, dull green or dark green staircase sort of including a boron silicon and germanium they are all metalloids metalloids meaning they have a few of metallic uh, properties and few non metallic properties so they like they are the combination of metals and non metals on the right side which are bright green which include carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine they are all non metals on the left side all of them have metallic properties on the left side we have predominantly metallic so by looking at the formula by looking at the compound you will decide like on which side of this staircase does this element belong is it a transition then it is a metal does it belong to group 1 or 2 it's a metal does it belong to group 7 then it's a non metal okay and then when you come across a molecule um which are in the middle which are in the middle of the groups for example carbon dioxide now in carbon dioxide we have carbon and oxygen now carbon and oxygen are almost in the middle okay they are almost in the middle carbon and oxygen or let's suppose nitrogen dioxide so you can see that they are almost in the middle okay not exactly but almost in the middle okay so these are non metals non metals together in fact no not in the middle sorry i got that wrong you have to see if the elements are on both elements are on the right side of the staircase right side of the metalloids okay like for example carbon and oxygen both of them are on the right side of the uh, metalloids and then if you have sulfur dioxide now sulfur and oxygen both of them are non metals because they are on the right side of the metalloids so non metal and non metal will form a covalent bond and therefore no charge and therefore no conductivity you understand these points you keep these points in your mind because this is such a common question they give you a table of substances and molecules and then they ask you which ones conduct which ones don't conduct so all you have to do is look at their formula and decide if you have metal and non metal if you have a compound which is metal and non metal then that means it's ionic ionic means that they have charged particles but now ionic have another problem in the solid state um in the solid state i will show you another picture how do ion ionic crystals exist in solid state uh let me see yes this is an ionic lattice 
Now here, the cations and the anions are bonded together very strongly. Now the anion has completely gained an electron and the cation has completely donated an electron. So now the, uh, the electron that has been gained by the anion is not available for any movement. It will stay with the anion. The anion will ne not let go of that electron. Why doesn't it let that electron go? Why? You know why? Because it will be unstable without it. It will be unstable without it. And it doesn't like it. It doesn't like to be unstable. So it will not let go of that electron. And so that electron will stick to it and is not available for conductivity. And of course, cation has lost it. So no point, I mean, no discussion about the cation. So whereas in metals, they were free. Now you might ask then why did the cations let those electrons free? Were they stable without them? Yes, they were stable without them. Yes, yes, okay? So uh, now if now they have charged particles, ionic crystals, they have charged particles, but they are not mobile. Mobility is the problem. Now, if we can only get these particles mobile, how can we get them mobile? Now, there are two ways of mobiling them. Either we melt it, okay? Either we melt it by providing uh, humongous amounts of heat and electricity. Because this bond is really strong, you need lots and lots of energy to break these bonds. If you want to melt it, you will bring the temperature to thousands or you know somewhere around uh, hundreds or 500 and above that. A lot of energy is required to break this uh, strong bond. Okay, and another way, another way of mobilizing these charged particles is to dissolve them in water. Now that is a cheaper way. You won't need a lot of heating. You won't need a lot of um, uh, electricity for that. You can easily dissolve in water. Just a little warming maybe, but that, that will be about it. And I told you how ionic crystals dissolve in water. Remember, I also shared images, pictures with you guys in the group. Again, I'm sharing with you. See, this is how an ionic crystal is melting in response to electric current passing through it. When we, because electricity is also like sort of providing them uh, thermal energy. It's providing them energy, which is breaking the bonds between the cations and the anions and therefore mobilizing these cations and anions, right? Now, this picture, I want you to pay attention. Can you see this? These are two ways that we can make these charged particles mobile. One is by melting. In that case, we would need temperatures around 800 degrees Celsius, okay? A lot of heating, a lot of energy. Or in other uh, case, dissolve in water. And it may be a little warming, and that's about it, right? So, uh, okay. This was about ionic crystals. So ionic crystals, ionic compounds. So first of all, when you are given a list of substances and you have to choose which of them can conduct electricity, you have to first of all see if they are ionic or covalent. Now, once you have decided on ionic and covalent, then you see if the compound is ionic, whether it is in an aqueous state or liquid state or solid state. Now, if it is in the solid state, then it won't conduct electricity. If it is in the liquid state, then that means it has been melted. So yeah, charged particles are mobile. So yes, it can conduct electricity. If it is aqueous, that means it has dissolved in water. And again, the charged particles can conduct electricity. So aqueous and liquid ionic can conduct electricity, but not solid. Now, if a molecule is covalent, and I told you how to decide upon that, if the, both the elements belong, are non-metals, if both the elements are on the right side of the periodic table, then the bond between them is covalent, meaning that the particles are not charged. They are not charged. So whether they are solid or in liquid state or whatever state, doesn't matter. 
they don't have charged particles, so state does not matter. They will not conduct electricity, except for an exception. There is one exception to non-metals, and that is graphite. Now look at the structure of graphite. Graphite is the only non-metal that conducts electricity. Why? Now look at this structure. These uh, black balls are carbon atoms, and these red balls are electrons. So these carbon atoms have made hexagonal rings with each other. Can you see? So there are layers of carbon atoms bonded to other carbon atoms making hexagonal rings. In between these layers of carbon, or the in between these layers of hexagonal rings of carbon, you have these free electrons. Free electrons. And remember, these layers can slide over, slide past each other. They can slide past each other. Uh, the the pencil the pencil lead that you have it is made up of graphite the reason why you are able to write with a pencil is because of these layers of carbon sliding past on onto each other and getting transferred onto your white paper so that is why you can see the words written in black is because these layers of carbon get off the lead of the pencil and get onto your white paper because they can slide over each other. Now, these mobile electrons, now these electrons are mobile. They are available for conduction. Now, where did this, where did these free electrons come? Wasn't, wasn't the bond covalent here? Carbon, carbon, right? Non-metal, non-metal. Where did these free electrons come? Now, the answer is this. The, in graphite, graphite is a form in which carbon exists in nature in which carbon does not bond to four other atoms. Like normally carbon bonds to four other atoms, right? Because it needs four more electrons to complete its octet. Here it does not do that. And now, you know, yeah, the, this is an exception. Now in science, you will come across a lot of exception. There are rules you learn so hard and then nature breaks it here and there. So yeah, this is one exception. So carbon is bonded to three other carbon atoms and you can see this red uh, ball, that is one electron which is not participating in any bond. And each carbon has one electron like this, a free electron, or you can say, you know, the, uh, the, an available electron which has not bonded to any other carbon atom. So these, these valence electrons of all the carbon atoms together make this layer of free electrons, which are available for the conduction of electricity. Okay, that's, so graphite is the only exception of non-metals that conducts electricity. Okay, now after I have discussed all of this, uh, I will also discuss about now, because you know, in electrolysis, we will come across battery and the electrical circuits and all of that. So I want you to understand what a battery is. It will help you in electrical physics as well as chemistry. What is a battery? Okay. Okay. Okay, this is another picture um, uh, of, of, of metals. The red balls are cations. The smaller blue balls are electrons. Now, can you see that they are all randomly moving? The free electrons are randomly moving here and there and from there to here, okay? But in figure 1b, which is at the bottom, all the electrons are moving in the right direction. This is when the metal is conducting electricity in a particular direction because the electrical current will flow in one direction. So when the a metal is conducting electricity in one particular direction. That means the electrons can move in only one direction. Okay, from positive, uh, sorry, from negative to positive. Right, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Now, let me, uh, wait. Yes, this one, this. I, I made this diagram in order to explain you I have made this a spring, you know, uh, this metal spring. I don't, uh, you must have seen metal spring in, in various toys and various uh, 
instruments, various equipments. Now we can uh, squeeze the spring and then when we release it, it uncoils or it is released back into its original length. So you have this is squeeze the spring and then you release it and then it elongates, right? So when you squeeze the spring, do you feel uh, some force acting upon your fingers? Like the spring is trying to elongate or the spring is trying to get back to its original position. Now electrons are squeezed together in a small space within the battery, just similar to this squeezed spring. Okay, why? They are trying to get out. Why? Because all, can you, can you see that electrons are negatively charged and they are all negatively charged. They all have similar charges. Similar charges repel, right? Like charges repel, but they are forced to be squeezed in this small space within the battery. Now they don't like to be so close to each other because they are all negatively charged. They all have the same charge. They don't like to be together in such a small space. So they are waiting for that chance to get out. They are waiting just like this a spring is waiting for you to get, to, for you to release it and so that it can elongate back to its original length. So these electrons are also trying to get out. Just give them a chance and they will get out. Okay, so when you complete the circuit, when you attach one terminal, and can you see that I have a squeezed electrons to the right half of the battery? Now the right half of the battery is the negative terminal. The empty half of the battery is the positive terminal. So we have electrons squeezed in that near the negative terminal of the battery. So when you connect one uh, terminal of the battery to the other through a wire, so you are providing that passage to these electrons that they've been waiting for, okay? These electrons will immediately enter into this metallic wire. And because since this wire is metallic, uh, they will accept the electrons, okay? And so the electrons uh, will move from the negative, from the ne ne negative to the positive terminal until this movement will go on until the uh, the concentration of electron will is equal at both the terminals. That means both the terminals are at the same, uh, will have the same charge. When the charge becomes same, then there will be no attraction because attraction is always between the uh, opposite charges. So there will be no attraction and they will stop flowing. Okay, this concept is also helpful in electrical physics. Okay, so this is, that's why batteries are called electron pumps. Why electron pumps is because the electrons come out of battery just like water comes out of a pump. So that's why they have used the term pump for this battery. Okay. Okay, and then uh, look at the figure, uh, look, look at this figure 4.16 on page 103. There is this carbon rod in this electrical circuit. This carbon rod is made up of graphite. As I told you, graphite is the only non-metal which can conduct electricity. Now, um, so uh, my question is that solids that conduct electricity, I told you were metals, but what about liquids? What about liquids? What about the liquids that can conduct electricity? What are they called? They are called, okay, I'm giving the answer myself. They are called electrolytes, okay? But before we go to electrolytes, let me talk about these metals and their uses first. I forgot that point. Let me use, uh, let me talk about the uses of uh, these metallic substances. And how are they used? Now, these wires are made up of copper. Okay, most of the wires, the domestic wires, I'll show you the, what, what do I mean by domestic wires. Uh, these wires are domestic, you know, the ones that we use at home with the electrical equipments, and they are uh, surrounded by these plastic insulators. Okay, plastic, by the way, is an insulator. Why, why is it an insulator? Because plastic is, again, a covalent substance and it does not have any charged particle, covalent substance. 
So the atoms are sharing electrons. There are no charged particles. So therefore, plastic is used as an insulator with these copper wires uh, within them. Okay. Uh, then the uh, then uh, this is a power cable. This is a power cable. Again, this is also used domestically in the houses, and it also has uh, copper wires within them. Reason why copper is so commonly used um, in electrical circuits is because I told you first of all it's a metal. Okay, but there are other metals as well. Uh, which conduct very good and I think gold and silver have better conductivity than copper but as I have mentioned before gold and silver are really expensive we cannot be making circuits out of them we cannot be making wires out of them so a copper is the third best and it's very economical uh, so copper that is why copper is used so commonly uh, but for these overhead cables you know, with these pylons, these overhead cables. In these cables, we use aluminum. Aluminum, why? Because aluminum, again, is a metal, so good conductivity, along with less density, because we don't want heavy cables sagging down too much. Okay, we don't want too much sagging. So copper is denser than aluminum. If we use copper, then the problem is that uh, the co copper's density is much greater than aluminum. And so the cables will sag a lot. Okay. So, but it, the density of aluminum is low, but then we want strength as well, right? Because they are conducting electricity great distances. Uh, so they have to have strength. That is, strength is given to them by a core made of steel by giving them a steel core. Okay, another thing that you're, and another uh, advantage of using aluminum in these overhead power cables is, is that they are resistant to corrosion. Hmm, why are they resistant to corrosion? That is one question for you, I will ask you. But let me first mention this one point. You know what these spiral looking structures are? These spiral looking structures, what are they? That's another question I want to ask you. These spiral looking structures, does anybody know what these are and what is their function? What is their function? Anybody knows? Let me ask you guys. Let's see. Yes, I cannot see any hands raised. Yes, good job. Okay, if one is metal and the, okay, now I can miss after the two sides have equal electrons, the battery doesn't work. Yes, the battery doesn't work. Yes, why? Because, um, uh, okay, I will have to get to the, um, I will have to explain this a little. See, electron flow, let me tell you, electron flow is more like diffusion you can think of it as diffusion you know diffusion remember from where high from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration like that so electrons will flow as long as uh the, the region where they are going uh, contains less of them and when the amount equalizes then they stop flowing basically for their flow they have to have unbalanced charges Okay, they will flow from a relatively negative charge to a relatively positive charge. You understand? So when the electrons start flowing, uh, the two terminals equalize, they start having the same uh, you know, amount of electrons and therefore eventually the electron flow stops. You know, when your battery, when your cell uh, is uh, out of battery, what happens? Same thing happens. The electron flow um, has, I mean, the electrons have flowed so much that now that both the terminals have now equal electron and that's when your battery dies. So you say, you know, my cell phone doesn't work anymore. Yes, okay. So now back to my question. Uh, steel for preventing expansion in wires? I don't know about that, Nabil. 
um, but it is for strength. It is for strength to make it stronger. Good job, Yusra. I am so proud of you and I'm so happy. You, you answered my question. Yes, aluminum does not uh, corrode because it has a protective layer of, what did you write? Protective layer of oxygen inside it? You want to you wanna change that sentence, but you are really close. Yes, it uh, does not corrode. It does not rust. By the way, corrosion is rusting. Same thing. Okay, corrosion is the same as rusting. That is reaction with atmospheric oxygen. Okay, so it does not corrode. It does not rust because of when these cables are exposed to the atmosphere, a thin visible oxide skin. Skin forms immediately, which protects the metal from further oxidation. The self-protecting characteristic gives aluminum its high resistance to corrosion. Okay, what is this skin called? Yes, Amana. Good job. Yes. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. There's a layer of aluminum oxide on it. And this aluminum oxide uh, does not allow the underlying aluminum to further react with oxygen. Okay. It does not allow the underlying aluminum to further react with the oxygen and therefore the underlying aluminum gets protected. Yes, yes. Everybody's saying a layer of oxide, but I wanted to know the whole, the complete formula, the complete name of the oxide, which is aluminum oxide. Good job. Good job, Hiba and Yusra and Amana. Okay, now my other question is, what, was, what were those things that I showed you in the picture? Insulators to prevent current flowing from flowing down the pylon. Good job, Galaxy A7, whoever you are. <laughs> I don't know your real name, but good job. Yes, your answer is correct. Yes. Now, what are what material are they made up of? What sort of an yes, it is these were insulators. I'm sharing my screen again. I'm sharing my screen again. Oh, I'm still sharing. Okay, this. This, these are spiral. I mean, they're not spiral, by the way. These are plates. Your book is talking about it. Your book has talked about it. If you have read the book, you can answer this question. It is mentioned in your book. But I, I uh, got a picture of it. I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what they look like. These are plates. What material are they made up of? So you know that it's an insulator because their function is to prevent the current. Because you see, enormous amount of electricity is passing through these cables, you know, to industries, from cities, from whole towns, from one town to another. So enormous, enormous amounts of electricity is is flowing through these cables and we do not want this electricity to be conducted down the pylon. Why? Because there are people at the bottom. Okay, there can be accidents, catastrophe if the pylons conduct this humongous amounts of electricity. So we have these insulators, okay? That is the purpose of these insulators to insulate these wires from the pylons. Now, what, you said insulator, but what insulator? Any idea? It's mentioned in your book. If you have read the book, you know it. Good job, ceramic plates. Yes, figure 4.17, Nabil. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when I first looked at this picture, 4.17, I couldn't make out what were they calling ceramic plates? Where, where? Because, you know, there are so many structures in this picture but then afterwards I found out, yes, okay? So these were the practical uses of metallic uh, substances. Now, another question for you guys, another question for you guys. Let me see, who can answer this? I am sharing, I am showing video. This, I'm showing video. Can you look at my question? Calcium, sodium, aluminum. Arrange them in order of decreasing conductivity. Calcium, sodium, aluminum. 
arrange them in order of decreasing conductivity, which decreases, uh, which conducts the most and which conducts the least. Tell me that. Ozema, you decreasing aluminum, calcium, sodium. Let me see. Okay, wait. You guys are really smart and I am really proud of you guys. Okay, let me see. Let me check the chat window. Aluminium. Sodium and calcium. Aluminium, calcium and sodium. Yes, Arham, you are right. Aluminium, calcium and sodium. Like aluminium is the best followed by calcium, followed by sodium. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And who else gave me this answer? Oh, wow, Arham, you're the first one. Aluminium, calcium, and sodium. Yes, uh, Hala, you as well. Good job. Aluminium, so, uh, calcium, and then sodium. Yusra, you said sodium, calcium, and aluminium. Did you get confused or you know? Now, tell me why. Now, tell me why. Aluminium has... No, okay, okay, I, I can unmute you. Yes, okay, Arham, what did you say? Aluminium has three electrons in outer shell. It has three valence electrons. Yes, yes. So you guys know it. Good job. Yes, good job. No, 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 no. Amna, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with the reactivity series. Okay. By the way, conduction of electricity is a physical property. It is not a chemical property. Okay. So uh, we will not uh, look at the reactivity series. The reactivity series tells us which is more reactive than the other. Now, in the conduction of electricity, we are only, this is a physical property. Because why? Because we are not making anything new. No new substance is being formed by the conduction of electricity. So this is a physical phenomenon. So we will only uh, look at, yeah, more the electrons, easier the conduction. That's making sense. More the electrons, yes. More delocalized electron per atom. In aluminum, because aluminum is in the third group, each atom gives away three electrons, which are available for conduction. In case of calcium, per atom, two electrons are available. In case of sodium, only one electron per atom. So that is why as you go uh, along the periodic table towards the right side, so from left to right, the conductivity increases, provided you stay within the metals. Okay, I'm not talking about the non-metals. So within the metals, the conductivity increases as you go from left to right, okay? Yeah, outer electrons show the reactivity in chemical reactions, okay? We were not talking about chemical reactions here. We are talking about conduction here, conductivity here, which is a physical property. Now, conduction of electricity can become chemical, Conduction of electricity can become electrical uh, provided we are using liquids. And I just told you the liquid that conducts electricity is called an electrolyte. Okay, that's an electrolyte. So electrolyte is any liquid that conducts electricity and in the process breaks down into simpler components. So electrolysis is like sort of the decomposition type of reaction. Remember the decomposition type of reactions we did? Uh, so when the electric current is made to pass through a liquid, which is an electrolyte, that breaks it down into its simpler components and therefore is a decomposition reaction. Okay. Now I am trying to get hold of Yes. Now, when electrolytes conduct electricity, there is a chemical change. They break into their components. For example, if we have liquid lead bromide and electricity is made to pass through it, it the electricity will break 
those bonds and by the way is it is this an ionic bond or a covalent bond uh, is this is this an ionic compound or a covalent compound now lead we know is a transition metal is it no i got wrong sorry sorry yeah but it is a metal it's not transition uh, it's in the fourth group right and then bromine is a halogen so it's a non metal so you have a metal on the left side of the ma metalloid and you have the non metal on the right side of the ma ma metalloid okay also please in the chat window let me know if there is anybody in this class who does not know about metalloids who does not know the staircase in the periodic table that i'm talking about there is a staircase of metalloids in the periodic table if there is anybody who does not know please let me know i will show you okay so uh, so uh, let me complete uh, this explanation of mine now lead bromide is an ionic compound because lead is a metal bromine is a non metal so metal and non metal so this is an ionic compound but we have melted it as you can see the state symbol is liquid by uh, uh, heating it of course to extremely high temperatures and as a result it will break or decompose into its components which are lead and bromine okay now we have two types of electrolytes i have already discussed this with you a uh, molten and dissolved in water dissolved in water are called aqueous molten are the ones which are melted due to heat or electricity okay now uh okay is there anybody who does not know about the metalloids can you tell the staircase about metalloids acha okay um then i will because you know i don't have that i will show uh, through video 355 where is the periodic table in your book what's the page number yes okay did my video start yes okay i have made this a staircase this is there in many of the periodic tables even on google can you see this sorry yeah can you see this it's starting from boron and coming down all the way till here till astatine okay and if i'm not mistaken these these are the shaded ones these shaded ones are the metalloids is arsenic shown i will have our own yes boron silicon germanium and then these and then this tellurium and then this astatine this uh, these are metalloids these are this is a, i call it a staircase it looks like a staircase so i i call this a staircase all the all the elements on the right side are non metals on the left side are all metals you understand this so on the right side are all non metals on the right on the left side are all metals so these are all metals these are all non metals okay so you have to see the two elements uh are they from the metal one from the metal and other other from the non metal then that's an ionic compound if both the elements are from the non metals those are covalent you get that and metal and metal most probably an alloy or metal itself so they will be conductors okay so this was that okay i was talking about this so now you you know okay okay you can't see my screen okay oh it is a small i am so sorry about it what oh
Okay, let me zoom it in. I'm trying to zoom it in. Yeah, is it is it better now? Please let me know in the okay good. Okay, 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 good. Alhamdulillah. So can you see this is staircase? I was talking about this. The ones I have shaded are the metalloids. The ones I have shaded are the metalloids. Okay. So metals on right side of this staircase are non-metals. On the left side are all metals. This is what I was saying. So when you look at a compound formula, you see if is if one element is from metal and the other is from non-metal, then the compound is ionic. If both the elements are from non-metals, the, they are covalent substances. And if you have two metals together, then that must be an alloy, okay? And they will be conductors, okay? So th these are all transition. You know this, right? Th this, these are all transition. They form colored compounds. They are colorful. Uh, they have colorful ions group one group two and then you know this right so yeah this is what i was talking about okay okay so let's get back to the uh, okay another question but before i move on uh no okay i'll ask that question la later first of all let's discuss the electrolytes now electrolytes are liquids which can conduct electricity so we have been talking about we have been talking about um the solids that conduct electricity now let me talk about liquids now when liquids conduct electricity that is a chemical change why because when electricity passes through liquids it breaks it down into its simpler components which is a chemical reaction which is a decomposition reaction so that is a chemical change okay now they have given this table in this chapter of metallic conductivity and uh, what is the other type? Yeah, electrolytic conductivity on page 105. 105, they have given you these uh, two types of conductivities between uh, metallic and electrolytic conductivities. Okay, electrolytic, there are two types of electrolytes, either molten, either you melt something and you turn it into a liquid, or aqueous that is you dissolve something in water now only ionic crystals will dissolve in water why covalent substances will not if they are solids they will not dissolve in water even if they are liquid they will not dissolve in water now why now that why lies in the structure of water molecule i will be so happy if anybody recalls the structure of water for me i will be so so happy i will feel as if you know my classes have brought some you know change i have brought some differences taught you something if anybody can recall the structure of water for me structure of water explain it explain me why ionic crystals only ionic crystals will dissolve in water why not covalent substances dissolve in water with the help of its structure? If anybody can explain me. Yes. Okay, Amna. Okay. Yes, Amna. Yes. Because in the the water is uh, when the ionic compounds are split into their ions. The yeah. positive part of the water they surround the negative uh, negative ion and uh, and the negative part of the water surrounds the positive ion. Good job, Alhamdulillah. Come, Alhamdulillah. Yes, you know uh, you have no idea how happy I am. I am so happy right now. This is this is what I have been working for. You know, I want you to understand that. And okay, tell me another thing. Uh, why do you think the uh, oxygen part of the water mo molecule is negative? Why? Because just a little more. Yeah, you have answered so beautifully. Just a little more. 
because it has the negative two charge like it has two electrons more two more yeah you you will explain you will explain in terms of electronegativity okay electronegativity the oxygen because it's more electronegative so therefore it has a stronger pull on the electrons so it will it will pull the electrons more towards itself remember that bed sheet analogy i gave you when the one when one child is bigger than the other and so the bigger child pulls the bed sheet more towards itself so because oxygen is more electronegative it pulls the electrons in the bond more towards itself leaving hydrogen partially positive okay and itself getting partially negative and then yes the negative part surrounds the cations pulling them out whereas the positive part of the wa water pulls out the anions right good job jazakallah khairan amna jazakallah khairan so um that is why only ionic crystals will dissolve in water because water molecule itself is polar you know polar meaning it has partial positive and partial negative and therefore it makes friends with only charges water makes friends with only charges it does not like covalent because they don't have charges water does not like covalent substances whether solid or liquid whatever water wants charges to be friends with that is why no matter how much you stir the oil with water eventually the oil will separate out on its surface in the form of a separate layer okay because the oil is non polar it is a covalent uh, substance so it has no charged particle so water will not dissolve it okay so um Uh, that is why ionic crystals only ionic crystals will dissolve in water so that is one type of electrolyte aqueous dissolved in water and then other is molten right and then uh, there are two more solutions of acids and alkalies now they are compounds so solutions of acids and alkalies because they also because they also uh, have ions okay acids and alkalies give us ions uh, in a solution okay now uh, we are running out of time uh, it's about it's uh, i have passed 9:30 so okay just this last thing look at these uh, i'm sharing my video look at this table this is from your book or you can look at your book table this table 4.3 okay electrolyte sulfuric acid and all these i want you to tell me why are these substances electrolytes and why are these substances non electrolytes okay i want you to tell me that so i couldn't get on to electrolysis i could only talk about conductivity in this one hour yeah so sorry about that but inshallah in the next class we will talk about uh, electrolysis of molten compounds and if time allows then aqueous uh, solutions as well okay so uh, yeah if you have any questions please ask me uh yes okay is there any question yes amna yes yeah. distilled water conducts electricity right no no distilled water has no ions in it and it has pure water molecules distilled water has pure water molecules it has no ions in it if you want the uh, water to ionize we can add some ions into it if we will add ions into it the water itself will some of the molecules will ionize okay because again because of the electrostatic uh, attraction between the ions and the water mo molecules so pure water distilled water means pure water so pure water will not conduct electricity okay it is a non electrolyte okay really quick let's discuss this uh, table why do you think ethanol petrol paraffin do not conduct electricity these three ethanol petrol and paraffin why should sayed nabil sayed nabil no yusra okay aisha zahid yes aisha zahid 
I think, ma'am, they did not conduct conductivity. Hello? Uh, yes. Okay, see, whenever you come across a question like that, what did I tell you to think about? I told you to think about whether they have charged mobile particles or not. Charged mobile particles or not. So you will say that they are not charged. Okay, because they are covalent, so they are not charged. Maybe mobile because they are all liquid, so maybe mobile, but they are not, the particles are not charged. So whether they are mobile or not doesn't matter. You understand? So answer me in terms of charged mobile particles. Now, Yusra, you tell me, why isn't molten sulfur conducting electricity? Yes, molten sulfur. Why isn't molten sulfur conducting electricity? Because um, it is a non-metal and it does not have free electrons, no charge. No, don't say electrons. It does not have mobile charge. Particles. Yeah, the mobile electrons. Sorry, it does not have any mobile electrons. And also it does not have any charge of free electrons to conduct electricity. Right, right. Sulfur exists on its own without any charge. Sulfur is a non-metal. Okay, so simple molecule. What about sugar? Sugar. Sugar solution. Any idea? Anybody else wants to answer that? Sugar? Okay, Sayed Nabil. Yes? It doesn't have mobile electrons. Good job. And then what, what does it have? Good job. Why, uh, uh, what does it, what, what are the particles called? What are they? Sugar is, what is a proper name for sugar? Glucose. Yes, 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 good job. Glucose, glucose. Remember I showed you glucose molecule? It's a hexagonal ring. Yes. Yes, it's a hexagonal ring. And so it does not have any charged particle. It is Yes, Hania, good job. They, it's a covalent structure of hydrogen and carbon. Good job, no charged particles. Now, this other list of electrolytes, the other list of electrolytes, sulfuric acid, what ions? Okay, use the chat window. That, that, that'll be, uh, that, that way it will be faster. Use the chat window. What about sulfuric acid? Real quick. What are now? Now we know they are electrolytes, so they must be having mobile charge particles, right? So we all know that now, by now. Now, name the mobile charge particles in sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, what are the ions in sulfuric acid? Hydrogen ions, good job. And, and, and sulfur ions, nice. Sulfate ions, beta, no, sulfate. I will write it down for you. S O four, and then two minus. Okay, uh, I cannot write it here. Yeah. Like S O four, and then two minus at the top. Sulfate ion. Yes, Aisha Nadim. Yes, good job. Hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. Okay, molten lead bromide. Real quick, because I need to go. Molten lead bromide ions in molten lead bromide. Beta ions ke naam batauge. Ions. Yes, Bro yes, Samia, this is how I want it. Lead ions and bromide ions, okay? Not bromate, Ibrahim, not bromate. You use the suffix eight when there is oxygen. Okay, remember this, you use the suffix eight at the end of the name if you have oxygen. It's okay, it's okay, we are le learning here. Aid, aid is a suffix we use when only two different types of elements make a compound like binary compounds, meaning only two different types of elements are making a compound, then you have the suffix "-ide". Okay, hydrochloric acid. Sodium ion, good job in sodium chloride. Sodium ions and chloride ions, good job, Hala. Yes, and hydrochloric acid, high, because it's an acid, so hydrogen ion and chlorine, and, and chloride ions, chloride ions, "-ide", "-ide", for Compounds which have two types of elements. Okay, copper two chloride. Hosema, I want you, uh, yes, Hiba, this way. Copper ions and chloride ions. Okay, then sodium hydroxide. What are the ions? 
sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Good job. Yes, yes. So we have discussed till electrolytes. Okay, so we will continue inshallah in the next class. Okay, let me know which class you want next. Do you want to continue this? Or do you want me to continue with the transport in animals and biology? Let me know in the group or you can let me know right now. Yes, what do you guys want? Uh, in the next class chemistry. 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 Yeah, let's finish this. Let's finish. Okay. Okay, then inshallah. Ma'am, we can cut. Okay, okay. We will continue inshallah tomorrow and uh, we will try to cover electrolysis of both molten and aqueous. Inshallah. Okay, Jazakallah khairan for your patience. Assalamu alaikum. I have recorded this class, okay? So if anybody wants, I can post. Okay? Okay, assalamu alaikum. I'm ending the meeting.